Hello, welcome to Check It Out with Rich. Uh, we are at Elkhart Campground and we're going to do a vent install on a microwave. And um, Lynn and Kimberly. Kimberly Catlin from CRRV Services. C2. C2 RV Services. And you're full time. Yep. And I noticed on your site that since you move around, you put your location on a site that that you're at at the top we'll put currently at or traveling to okay that's good yeah when i was checking you out i uh seen you was in state college which is close to us we're in uh, pittsburgh so. take down the microwave the convection oven microwave conversion that i saw a wonderful video about and um we will spin the fan uh to change the vent from the front exhaust to a back exhaust then we'll mark and cut the wall. Um, before I fully cut the wall and punch through the outside, I'll make sure there's no stud in place. Uh, and then we'll, we'll poke holes to guide me outside. I'll go around outside, cut the fiberglass. When we remove the uh, block, we'll put foil tape to just insulate the styrofoam a little bit, provide a little bit of protection. I'll mount the vent on the outside. And then we'll put the microwave back up and be done. Okay. How long? Uh, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Once you know, even not even doing it the first time would probably take you about an hour and a half to maybe two. Okay, it's um, five to eleven. Let's see. Right. Barring no problems. Yes. Hi, <laughs> Mike. Oh, you did laundry too. Yes. Another key to saving time on the job. You ready? Yep. And then we rotate down. Over the lift. <clears throat> Just that easy. So what are you guys up to today? Decided to do laundry because uh, tomorrow we're going to move. That's what Becky figured. And then they don't have laundry facilities there. So, all microwaves and convection ovens that I've seen can be vented forward like this one is. You can vent it backwards like we're about to do, and you can vent it out the top. I haven't seen, nor will I plan to do a top, top one. No, that doesn't even sound. Uh, Valors, I've run into. There's a couple Valor models where they don't have access to the exterior wall. Okay. And they would need a top vent or a ducting put in to yes. the trailer, um, which I'm trying to develop right now. So, with this model, this is something that is a little bit unique to this model of, of convection oven. You have to reroute the wire as you spin the fan. Most of them have this exactly, so you just spin this one. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. And the wire is actually connected up here. Okay. This one, you just have to feed it through the other side. Let's see, can we get it on the way? Yeah, I'm going to send this video to the uh, manufacturer, <laughs> so maybe they'll uh, change the design a little bit. No, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And there's the holes back here to the Screw exhaust. In. So the last step before I close it up. To cut these. To take you have out. to open up these rear portions yeah she uh she used the convection microwave this morning and everything up there was so hot so i don't know if this will help alleviate that oh, yeah. a little bit quiet 
can and makes it so you don't have to worry about opening up the roof and setting off the fire alarm and cleaning <laughs> the upper part yeah depending on what kind of food you cook. yeah the, the smoke detector went off this morning and breakfast wasn't even done all right so that is now modified Going. There's the screws. One here, one here, right? Yeah, wait a minute. Let me see the screws. Let me see all of them. Okay, so on this unit, all the screws are the same. Doesn't matter if they go in here okay. or up here. Um, on the standard insignia that is installed in Paradigms. Um, and probably avenues as well. I think that's what's in the avenue. In uh, the I think. Um, back screws are different than the top screws. Uh, all I know is the one that was in here sounded like a jet edging <laughs> when you turn that fan. And you, you couldn't run it without the fan. Yeah. Without that fan? No, w without the, the fan without in the here. Fan. Yeah. yeah, so if you're just microwaving real quick and it's unbelievably loud also notice i am using a drill driver very lightly not using impact yes um, that's key to all of this work Never yes <laughs> use the impact i wish uh, the manufacturers would uh teach their employees to do the same exactly. yeah <laughs> on, the, on the production line i can uh, i'm sure it just yep quick. and it's not that hard to learn you know, you can pump screws in one one after the other, torque them down without uh, breaking or stripping. I'm going to put the backing on here. Lynn. Okay. What's the purpose of that? Uh, it just, I don't know, what is the purpose Seals it. of this, Lynn? It's, well, so the microwave sits out from the wall just a little bit. And it, I've done it, it, one of my first customers actually asked me to do it and he had had some foam and it actually just seems to prevent a little bit of pull from other spaces yeah. and it just seals up between the wall and the opening in the wall that we're going to put so on this one where would you like me to put the foam um i put it low um okay. I don't it's have a it's here inside with me hold on yeah okay yeah. it intended yeah when they built it and it, you would install it in the wall this way and of course they're thinking that this is going in a sticks and bricks where you have a two by four wall possibly ducting more and so this is the minimum area that they would want you to exhaust mm. our exhaust is actually going to be about down to here okay and it'll be fairly wide here so what we'll do is we'll put the foam along this edge right along this coverage here okay. and up there and then across the okay. top. Do you have the scissors in here? There's scissors in that drawer, top drawer, right in front. Cool, thank you. We have some. Oh, you have them outside, don't you? Yep. So what I'm gonna do over here on the wall is measure the center point. I've already checked. Now this measurement doesn't have to be exact. We have a lot of play. Well, that's good because there's a lot of play in those cabinets. <laughs> So what we're going to do is, is I see that it's about 32 and 3 eighths. So we're going to go 16 and 3 sixteenths and mark the center point. And just a little mark. Just need to be able to see it. Yeah, we, we, when you put it back up, push it this way as far as you can because of that being off, yeah. this is off just a little bit. Okay. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a line to give myself a guide on this next step. This wallpaper doesn't really no. like my pen. You want a Sharpie? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Very important tool. Sharpie. Yes. <laughs> Almost as important as duct tape in some circles. Mm -hmm. And again, all we need is enough of a mark to see this next step. So I've taken a template and marked the template for the size of the cutout and I've included the offset from the top of the cabinet. Okay. And now I place that centered on there and we're ready to uh, mark what we're doing. 
So this drill will go all the way through. <laughs> do you know if there's a stud here? I do not. Okay. So I, we'll, we'll I, do I don't believe there is. Okay. So we're going to do our, our double check. Yep. So all I'm going to do is go in enough to mark where to cut the interior panel. And actually this kind of tells me there's nothing, nothing there. That it should be okay. Yep. Now we've got our six holes drilled. The wall is a lot thinner than I was expecting. Yeah, it's not very, it's just uh, paneling. So what I'm doing now is mainly just so that I can cut straight. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, now if you was uh, making that cut going uh, across and you run into a stud, then, then what? You're done? Well, I don't know if there's a stud there or not. Okay. All I was doing was going in enough yeah. to check, right? Okay. If, if there is a stud back there, we can do one of two things. We either don't do anything and put the microwave back up. There's, you could not take these back up or even glue them yeah. with styrofoam friendly glue, uh, which not all glues are, Yes. Um, or you can remove the part that is not the stud, cut the part out of the vent that fits around the stud, and you'll be fine. There's more than enough room in the exhaust there. to have a stud in there yeah. and, okay. and not defeat the system. Okay. So all I'm doing right now is trying to make sure that there's no stud that we have to worry yep. about. that handy dandy poker. All I'm trying to do is make sure it goes in the same all the way across. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. So now this is where the vacuum really comes in handy because <laughs> make sure I've got clean cut all the way. Go through the wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Go through the wall. Becky was, uh, she didn't like me drawing holes. I've had more than a few owners want to leave the rig when I did. Oh, this. really? No, That's no, the way no. Becky was the first couple of times. And then I put a spray port out here, and that really, she, she, she couldn't watch. <laughs> yeah, I did do, a, I think, a two, a two and a half inch hole or something out here for the spray port, and she just, nah, yeah, she off, left. Right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, we were talking about people uh, nervous about cutting the side. I actually had somebody come out and was all excited about it yesterday. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, here it is. All right. So with the multi-tool, it just seems to cut better going this way where you're getting the full effect of the vibration. That easy. You want me to take that tool so it doesn't fall? Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. So now, I don't really know if this is required. But it seems well, to be helpful. Doesn't hurt. Just putting foil tape a little bit on the outside, wrapped to the inside, and Kimberly's inside doing the same thing so that we'll overlap it. 
Yeah. And it just keeps uh, moisture out of the styrofoam. Yeah. I like the idea with the uh, tape. Yeah. Uh, as we've been doing a, a bunch of these installs, it's just really helpful to have everything mm -hmm. out ahead of time. So, uh, how long you been at Tech? Uh, since November. November? Yeah. Oh. Going on six months right now. Okay. Business good? Very good. Good. Um, and it, it really kind of depends on where you're at and when yes. people know about you yeah um you know as i as i drove up to your spot somebody with a, a broken toilet in the campground mm -hmm. saw my door and um once you get you know i do warranty work uh kimberly and i have been blessed our, our finances are set such that i can i can hold off on the payment okay for warranty work yeah and um there are techs that don't do it because it can take a while depending on the yeah. warranty company uh but because i do warranty work once they know about you, they watch you. And yeah. They watch your website mm -hmm. and they watch your locators. And when we were in the State College, I got several calls to do uh, service in various parks around State College. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's what Becky said. She said, well, he's going out. He's not going to be able to enjoy the rally. I said, Becky, you understand, that's his living. You know, yeah, it's a vacation to most other people. It is to you too. But still, if you could walk away here and make a chunk of money do it exactly and and we're trying to do it and that's why i'm only doing a limited number i probably could do a handful more mm -hmm. but it really does come down to the point of overworking yeah um, but that that is the hardest part of the job being in a campground in the evening if somebody's got a problem <laughs> or wants you yeah. to work you can work but sometimes you need the time off yep all right so we're ready for the next step Okay, is that vent cover one of the lockable ones that I have to come off yeah. to open? Yeah. Okay. I want to film this part. Um, so here's the tabs that lock it open and closed. Um, so it can. Oh, okay, I see. I, I see. can open there or you can, can lock there. the tab down. Now, okay, I've got the same vent on my trailer, and in 2,000 miles, I've never locked it. I don't think I. No. Um, the other factor is every once in a while, if you've got wind down that side of your trailer, it'll flap a little bit. Yeah. You've got the microwave that deadens the noise okay. quite a bit. Uh, Kim was saying the other night when it was really windy, it sounded like I was popping popcorn. Oh, yeah. And it was flapping a little bit, and then it went away. Uh, so it's a personal preference. I like this model because most of the screws are hidden once I mount it. And I'll open this up because I'm going to trim it. So you've got 10 screws that mount it, five on top and five on the bottom. So I'll mount it that way, and then you close the top and you put in the last two screws. Okay. So. What's the brand name? This brand, is, it says Jensen on the front. You'll find it online called Hajinx. Hajinx, uh, okay. H-J-E-N-K-S. Uh, and various suppliers have it. Um, and uh, so it's not, it's not too difficult to find. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do right now is finish prepping the butyl. What we do is we put butyl tape on it, and the butyl is what actually gives it the seal. After we get it mounted on the sidewall, uh, we run a bead of Lexel around it to give it a little bit of backup around three sides. Okay. Um, I do seal the bottom edge just because I, I don't want to have road moisture yeah. coming up. See the bottom of the butyl, I should say. So depending on the butyl, this can get really messy. A lot easier to clean off right now than when I get it on. Yes. All right, so all right. last step, uh, we've got the butyl tape on, and it's all trimmed around the edges. And right in. This coach. Now that it's against the coach, um, Kim, can you hand me, Kimberly, can you hand me the drill? 
This is a really important step. Um, Pre-drill the screw holes. Uh, we're using number eight screws and we use a 1 8 inch pre-drill. And it provides a nice tight grip on the screw and it ensures that we don't uh, create a spider crack in the fiberglass. I believe online documentation talks about 964 for a pre-drill and I, it, this seems to work better in my experience and unlike unlike a lot of RV manufacturers uh, we only have a thin sheet of fiberglass so I use a screw that will go through the fiberglass and not three quarters of the way through the wall so one inch screw will go through this cover and into the fiberglass and through the fiberglass at full diameter. No, that's not a self-tapper, right? Uh, it actually is a self-tapper. Is it? Um, it's a general screw for RV okay. purposes. Nope, I don't want to put this one in yet. That's the last cover hole. I want this one. So this just works fine and go through and snug and I'll tighten down in a moment. And this is definitely a location where you do not want to use a power drill. Because when you strip these out, you're done. You're done. <laughs> and I, I don't want to do that to the exterior of a coach. It's pretty unrepairable and needs other workarounds. Most clients wouldn't like that anyway. No. <laughs> One of the benefits of the butyl is they actually preset your screws without having a magnet. Okay. Alright, so last step. And then we'll seal it up. Lexel, which is an alternative to ProFlex. One of the benefits with this is that it's a little bit more clear and it's very flexible. I don't know if ProFlex is as flexible as this after it cures. Um, I've seen other videos that talk about this being 400% elasticity. Last step, then we go put the Another nice thing about the Lexel, you can get it at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. Yes, that's really a great selling yeah. point. And they come in these hand squeeze tubes yes. versus the large caulking tubes. And it's almost, it, it can actually be applied to wet surfaces. Uh, you know, I'm not going to mount Rebecca, yeah. <laughs> should have been here for the... Nope. Cutting of the hole in the side of the camper. I was sitting with Darlene, I said, when he starts to drill a hole in the side of the camper, I don't want to be anywhere near that. <laughs> Not the first one. Okay, that's it. So you can see what it looks like inside. If there were a stud here, we could have removed material around it, notched the inside flange of the duct, and been fine with the stud being here. And you'd still have enough uh, airflow go yeah, going Yeah, plenty through. of airflow. Okay. You okay, ready? now for the fun part. Yes. Oh, this came down. Okay. That's something else I gotta get at Lowe's, more of this stuff. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, now before we put it up, I wanna examine these. Yeah. So sometimes, when installers are putting these in, we've been talking about the ratchet drivers. They over torque these and these get a little bit damaged. So when you go to do this work, it's easy to get the microwave out, but not back in. So it's a good idea to examine them, make sure they're solid and make any rectification before you put it back up. Do you um, have cage, cage nuts just in case? I don't. Um, it's something that I, I should carry, but what I did uh, earlier today actually is um, had one of these fall out. Uh, we removed.
removed the fan, we got it back, uh, we held it, put the bolt in, and physically held it, and put in foil tape underneath to just okay. hold it in place. There we go. Okay, then push it to the left as far as you can. It's not going to go very much, but... I think it's as far as it can go. Nope. Let me get the part out. Yep. Come over. Um, I think it might be good. There's an equal gap on both sides. Is there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's pushed over to the left as far as it'll go on that bracket, it'll be good. It felt like it wasn't going anywhere. No. It's a really good idea to feed all three by hand when they're very loose. Okay. As the uh, driver snugs down, I'm just using very light pressure on it, and I will allow it to torque once or twice, but never let it just run away with torque. Are we secure? Yeah, we're Ooh. secure. Okay. Tops middle center, yeah. All right. And then again, when you turn on the fan, there you go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. It was uh, pretty easy. Um, I probably should have did it myself, but help a fellow ally out. Um, Lynn, Kimberly, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And if you ever need uh, repair, always check his website. You never know where he's going to be. Thank you very much. You can find us at www.c2rvservices.com. Information is on there about the vent hood installation cost and what it, what it entails. Uh, and as Rich said earlier, our uh, location is always at the top of the website. And there's a, a message form and a service request form. Thank you. All right, thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next time.